So I've pretty much done the whole fucking walk. No keys, no keys up trees, no keys dismantled on the park, no keys hung to any trees on anything around near where I am. No keys anywhere to be found. No phone calls off the council to say they've been handed in. So it definitely means someone's... You're not seen any keys around today, have you? No. Someone's definitely picked them up somewhere. But I'm fucked now because that's my door key, my car key, my garage key, which is my shed keys. And now I'm going to have to ring and find out exactly how much it is to change all my fucking locks over and get all new keys, which is a complete chain pain in the fucking arse. The car key being worse than anything and i'm wondering because i don't there wasn't two keys on there but i've got a feeling the spare keys in the fucking car um so if i can find the spare key i can still sell the car that's not a problem but if i can't find the spare key i'm fucked so anyway i want to take advantage of something what do you think the basic salary is of people that would spend their time in a space and place like this I can tell you that the majority of people within this remit are on government benefits, government pensions, uh, disability, um, and the lower spectrum of the working class, such as the cleaners, the carers. You may get some HGAs here, um, and you wouldn't get any police officers living here. Um, you won't predominantly get proper nurses living here, but you will get people who are studying, students, things like this. Are you going to see the likes of Victoria Beckham walking around here? No. Are you going to see Angelina Jolie come and do UN work to a place like this? No. Are you going to see even the local MPs walking around this place? No, they even send in their teams to go door knocking and they don't tend to really come out around here themselves. There is a stereotype between the upper, middle and lower classes. This is the lower class of society and every estate like this within the Western world is classed as the lower society of the Western world. This is where the immigrants are. This is where the settling people are. There's a lot of students that come down and use the courts that, is, you know, maybe inspire some of the kids in some ways, but all of the kids, Elijah, calm it down. All of the children all go to local schools within the area around here. I'm hoping to bump into someone. And that's what you have to listen to down here. Oh, I'm going to fucking smash his head in one by one. We're getting all the fucking cars out, mate. We're going out. We're going to smash their fucking heads in one by one. I guarantee you, yeah, I can choose to live at whatever earning potential that I like. Sometimes it does change a little bit of a, dress, a change of dress. Sometimes it is just a change of mindset that changes the residual of the outside. From when I first ever came off Downing Street, you've got to remember that I was so focused, so driven to stop Aaron and Faith's adoption. I didn't know anything else other than bringing them home. And yes, I had things in the pipeline. Yes, I had properties in the pipeline. Yes, I had security in the pipeline to bring them back. That wasn't the problem. But I was so set on literally stopping it that once, it was literally in the split of a week, of meeting Dean. Up you get. Up you get. You all right? Shiloh. Are you all right? Having a bruised ego? Bit of shame. Jump up. Are you all right? Go. Go play. Um, so even sort of people, they do it on purpose. Nobody's taken my keys on purpose today. I fucked up myself. I fucked up because I got fucking dressed today. And I've been waiting for this moment for me to get dressed for ages. I've had piles and piles of fucking clothes for ages waiting for me to get dressed. I don't wear skirts. I don't wear skirts. I put a bloody skirt on today. And then I thought, where the fuck am I going to put my keys? <laughs> so I managed to squeeze them in my pocket. But, yeah, but can we say it's gremlin things, demonic things? Yes. People don't understand how the universe works. 
remember them little silly things like you lose your keys, you lose your car keys, you lose your, your bag, you lose this, you lose that. It's very normal for someone like me to, to do this, but I think my point that I'm sort of saying is take my keys, take my gas, take all this stuff away from him, take it away from you. Take your front door key away from you, your car key away from you, your utilities, and I wonder how many people, if the shit really, really, really hits the fan, could truly, truly, truly survive in having to be totally independent from the services. They've created such a codependency on the services as even, even the working class, it's, it's, it's horrendous the divide that's been created even on the park here there is a divide between cultures my kids play with pretty much anybody and everybody in terms of culture but not all of the kids do and even at school some of them segregate some of them are friends some of them are not friends um some of their families don't allow them to be friends um it's a bit it's a different one but anyway in terms of me being autistic or if you want to use the label borderline personality that people are all hearing about at the moment, I was diagnosed with to take my kids. Um, I don't like being in these situations because it's out of control. These are the things that are security for me. Front door key, my car key, my cars, my, the thing. They're not success. It doesn't matter which car I have. It's such a Shiloh with his bike. Yeah, you all know what bike Shiloh's got. It's a hundred and fucking 72 pound fucking bike. But what bikes he come out and to ride on down here? Yeah. So even Shiloh has already decided he's not bringing his decent bike down here anymore because of the way it is. And he doesn't mind bringing his smash around bike down here. You know, even the kids change their clothes over to come down here today. And the irony is I'm dressed today and I've been snubbed three times by people, not the normal people that I see, but just normal people from this culture. I have been looked down and snubbed already. And yes, I've got my cap on, but I'm slightly dressed. Does it make much difference? Yeah, I'm, I'm still sort of slightly campaigned. Hang on, because my dog's going to run around the side. I've got my charger. So, yeah, got my knees in, but I'm dressed, yeah? So when I'm around in spaces, I've never revealed my identity. It's why I've stayed in just joggers, my, my hoodies, my cap, not done my hair, nothing like that. Because it's up to me to decide where I position myself at the moment. It's up to me to decide the earning potential that I want to be at. It's up to me to decide the lifestyle and choices that I would like. But does this system like it? No, it didn't like it when I went into the papers in the first place. And do you know how I actually ended up in the paper? It took for me to go down to one of these seminars and the editor of the Chorley Guardian was actually originally the editor of the Daily Mail. He'd been fired from the Daily Mail, right? So there was a right beef with everything. And he had a local job at the Chorley Guardian. And I offered to hold the camera for him and film him while he was speaking. So obviously he jumped at the chance to have it because he was on his own independently speaking at a, a business networking event. And I took the time to video him for him. So obviously I then took the time to be able to show him the trap that I was facing as a single mum in the system and getting out of it and how I had to get past that earning potential of 60,000. And he knew that I was already involved in success resources. He knew that I was already listening to Anthony Robbins tapes and you know, going to all these workshops, seminars, conferences and things like that. But they say, when you change your life that dramatically, you lose your friends, you lose your family, you lose the people. And actually a lot of people don't want you to grow. It's no different than say a child from an environment of council who does go to university and has nobody in their family who um, have ever, ever, ever done anything in terms of education. They didn't do well at school. Most of them didn't finish. Um, and you go and be the first person to go off and leave your family and go to university. One, it can inspire the rest of the family. 
It can inspire a cousin to go and become a paramedic. It can inspire another cousin to go off to university. It can inspire your siblings part below you or above you to go off and do the same. Is education and university the route to go down? No, everything that we need to learn is available to us. Yeah, it's probably one of the lads over there, darling. Do you want to go and shout them? Go and take... Before you go, you haven't lost the ball, have you? It's all right, go and ask him. Um, you know, so anyway, they say at school, don't they? It's about the five people that you associate yourself with. And people can say, I can tell by how far you're going to go in life by who you associate yourself with. And it's about that mindset. I've always struggled with the relationships that I've had, with the mindsets that the men have had. And that's been because both of them were army so they went straight in from education straight into army and they had that militant army attitude about them and they only knew to get up do a job be told what to do um be there at a time that they were told to do it and not to think for themselves and i really 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 struck did Steve, uh, uh, james at the beginning was quite interesting because he actually went and did a competition um, and it was like one of those can't cook, won't cook things. And he wanted to really push out because he was a slop chef, but he really wanted to make proper, proper, proper meals. And excuse me, play nicely. Um, but he quit that. And then same with Graham. Graham went self-employed at one point because after we came out of the army, he went to work for um, a private company, still as an operating department, pra- operating department practitioner. So he was slightly different scale, okay? So the sort of men that I could have met in my local area, a lot of them have gone off and done some decent things with their lives, but a lot of them were prison, dead, drugs, <laughs> crackheads, smackheads, homeless. Um, you know, so... But again, it's pigeonholing and judging people based on how their own lives have gone and the decisions that they've made. And it's really difficult for people to go, yeah, but just get up and get on with it. Just get over it. Just change your ways. Now, I've got lots of people that are through student universities and they'll go off. If I asked every single one what they were studying, it would be something really niche. It would be something really specific, like finance, business. Uh, Way it's the ball she wants. (laughs) Leave the ball. Leave the ball. <laughs> Sir and ball, seriously, she's driving me nuts. She just literally went to get his ball. Um, she Seriously, I have to have her literally 24-7. Um, I have even thought of putting a muzzle on my dog now. And it's only because... Are you all right? It's only because I literally... Elijah! Hang on. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Are we dead? Are we dead? Are we crying? Have we got tears? Oh. You found a water balloon, but I've got one on the floor. I've got one on the floor. Oh, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah. Right, I've got to go and deal with my 